Now we'll discuss about <coughs> transformer on load. We have already discussed about transformer on load. Now the discussion is about transformer on load. When the secondary of the transformer is connected across the load, it is called loaded condition. And but of course, when the transformer is loaded, due to EMF E2 which is getting generated in the secondary and I current I2 starts flowing in the secondary. You can see this thing man. This is my core. This is my primary winding. This is my secondary winding which is connected to the load. My primary part of this is connected to the supply. What happens when phi passes over here which is getting generated because of this primary winding energized by the supply or I can say E1 which is the EMF1 is in the primary winding because of this phi1 is getting phi or phi1 whichever whatever right location is phi is getting generated here which is passing through this core and getting linked with this secondary and and this secondary is having an E2 generated over here and now when my secondary is not open circuit it is connected to a load and a current I2 starts flowing in this E2. Now a reverse action comes into play that when this I2 is there this I2 also produces a flux in secondary which is called as phi2 which is in such a direction that it opposes phi according to Lenz law. So phi 2 opposes phi which is the cause exactly of phi 2 and because this phi is getting reduced my E1 primary voltage is getting decreased. This is how a transformer on load works. Now we will discuss about the losses in the transformer. In the losses, first of all, first comes core losses. Second thing, second type of losses in a transformer are ohmic losses Third type of losses are called the stray losses And last one, fourth type of losses in a transformer are called as the the four type of losses are called as the dielectric losses. We will discuss all these losses one by one. First of all, core losses are also called as iron losses, which we can divide into two parts. One is called the hysteresis losses, another is called the eddy current losses. Hysteresis losses are in the core, which is Minimized by CRGO 
using CRJO, we will reduce hysteresis losses and by using laminations. We will reduce these adhesion losses. We can have the formula of hysteresis losses that pH is equal to kH into F into Bm raised to power x. And here we can have the formula for Pe, which is called the adhesion losses, as Pe is equal to Ke into F square into Tm square. Here I can have a modification in this formula that we have seen one thing when we were discussing about the EMF equation of the transformer that phi is directly proportional to V by F. If I put V by F over here, I will get Kh into F1 minus X into V x from this if I put the value of x and here I can have ke into v square <coughs> so I can say directly say that according to this formula I can say direct that hysteresis losses are dependent of the voltage and frequency whereas any current losses are not dependent on the frequency any current losses are independent of the frequency now coming to the ohmic losses we know that ohmic losses account for the i square r1 losses These are called the ohmic losses, which is at 75 degrees centigrade. This is very important regarding objective type of questions. This is on 75 degrees centigrade. Now coming to stray losses. Stray losses are because of leakage. Leakage in the tanks, bolts, etc. Whatever leakage is happening in those or comes under stray losses. Last, the directed losses are in the insulating material. This happens in all happens in insulating materials. Now Coming to one more point where um, questions are being asked in examinations about the uh, resistance referred to primary or resistance referred to secondary or inductance referred to primary or inductance referred to the secondary. What type of question those uh, those questions are exactly? We will see that uh, in the equivalent circuit we have. Uh, resistance, we have inductance, we have shunt branch parameters. This is R0, this is X0, this is R1, this is X1. Everything has rotation, we already know this thing, but I will discuss this thing. A transformer ratio will come, and again the secondary will come. Here I will have R2, here I have X2. If I want, if I want to transfer all these things R2 and X2 to the primary side, neglecting these, right now I can have R2 over here and X2 over here. The resistance or inductance referred to primary R1 or 
x1 note that here r1 and x1 are capital right now here r1 and x1 r2 x2 all are small in size where this will be treated as r2 and x2 dash and this will be as x2 dash r1 capital means referred to the primary site this one says that it's referred to primary site if i will say r2 then it means the resistance referred to the secondary site if i say x2 then it means inductance referred to the secondary site now r1 is equals to what obvious r1 plus r2 dash which is equals to r1 plus r2 which was the previous r2 here by n1 by n2 whole square in the same way i can have the formula for x1 also x1 is equals to x1 plus x2 dash which is equals to x1 plus x2 multiplied by n1 by n2 whole square the same formula is for x2 uh, x1 is also in the same way if i want to write the formula for resistance referred to secondary side i can write r2 which is normal now plus r1 dash since i will take this r1 to the secondary side now this will become r2 plus of r1 multiplied by n2 upon n1 whole square in the same way i can have the formula for x2 also i can write over here x2 is equals to small x2 plus x2 x1 dash which is equal to x2 plus x1 multiplied by n2 upon n1 whole square in the same way i can write this formula so these are actually four formulas which are supposed to be learned by heart by the uh, students uh, this is very important regarding uh, when objective type of questions are being asked in the examinations these are very important in uh, solving the uh, transform of questions also so we should understand what exactly the formula are as well as we should learn these by heart